note. Uh, let me tell you what the layers for the challenge was this month. Um, so the first layer was to paper weave. That's kind of a cool one. Not something you necessarily hear all the time and literally no kind of directions to it. So however you want to add some sort of paper weaving, that's what you do. So I'm actually going to get mine started right here with some white cardstock and I'm just going to cut a few strips. I th they're about a quarter of an inch wide. Um, I was still sort of deciding if I wanted to do it the whole page across or if I was just going to do a little bit of it. So you just kind of see me doing it slowly and then I think about it a little bit and kind of him and ha. Um, and eventually I just decide it's not quite halfway across. Um, and then layer number two was to add three or more pictures. Layer number three was to incorporate colored cardstock. So you can see right here I have some colored cardstock. I'm going with green. Um, layer number four was cork, which I love. I know that was a challenge for a lot of people, but I have lots of cork and I love using it. Uh, layer number five was to add an element of gold. Layer number six was to use foam thickers. And layer number seven was to add some sequins. So really fun challenge, really super versatile. All of these elements can really apply to just about any type of layout. So um, yeah, I was definitely excited to kind of start playing along. At this point where I'm putting it together, I kind of showed you at the beginning, I only had, I think I only had up to layer four written down. Um, so I didn't have the rest of the layers, but I thought I had enough stuff going to go ahead and kind of start a layout and get a bit of an idea. And I just sort of crossed my fingers that there wasn't going to be a crazy twist at the end that uh, made me have to sort of pull everything apart. So the twist was really super simple. It's a great twist. I actually really love this twist and I did it without realizing. Um, sorry, my neighbors are being kind of loud. Um, I, I fulfilled the twist before the twist had even been announced. It was to use four different patterned papers. So here you can see I'm going to go through some pattern papers and I'm going to pick two of them. Uh, and basically what I'm doing for my my paper weaving is I'm making it look like grass. So I use the two different uh, colors of green. It's the same paper. It's dark on one side and lighter on the other side. Um, so the two different colors of green from the cardstock. And then I have these two pattern papers and I'm just gonna paper weave through my slits that I made to kind of have this grass element down at the bottom of my layout um, and my pictures are zoo pictures. I've done a couple of uh, layouts using these pictures recently so they were just kind of there and ready to be used and there's four of them so that fulfilled the the layer of having more than three photos so um, or three plus I guess so I could have just used three but there were four so that worked out really well uh, and it's my kids kind of standing in front of the lion and um, then the boys being super excited and kind of clapping because they saw the lion. Holy moly. There is a house full of teenagers across the street and they are all outside yelling and being a little crazy. So I apologize for that. Um, and if we weren't having a heat wave, I would probably close the window, but we are definitely in the throes of a heat wave, so I need that breeze to come through. Um, but yes, yeah, so you can see I'm being very kind of uh, random with my with my grass. I started by tearing the cardstock paper, and I just thought that that would give a little bit of texture. But then I realized I could probably end up being overly nitpicky if I was tearing the pattern papers as well so I decided just to cut them so I put my my torn paper in first and then I cut strips of my pattern papers and so not all of them are woven 
from the bottom all the way up through the top. Some of them only go halfway. Some are kind of sticking out in different various places just to add a little bit of texture and give it a bit more of um, like a dimensional feel of grass. So it definitely took me a while to do this because I felt like I was constantly moving things around and putting things um in different places here you can see I kind of I was pulling some of the pattern papers out and then going back in and putting a different pattern or just weaving it up to a different level and even after I was done this I sort of filled up this whole bottom I then went back in and popped some of the uh, little pieces on top of other layers so in the close-up pictures you'll see but I I just wanted to sort of give the impression that the grass wasn't all just coming up at the very top it was kind of poking out um, throughout all of that weaving I hope that makes sense uh, and then here are my four pictures and so I'm just going to kind of pop them along that edge tucked into the grass uh, and yeah, I mean, I, I think still I could go back and add more little blades of grass, but, um, I'm going to refrain or restrain myself and leave it the way it is. Uh, and there I just showed you that I got, this is a few days later. So I finally got the last, the last few, um, layers so I could go ahead and finish this layout. So before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and glue all of these elements down. I'm just touching a little bit of wet glue in a few different places. So really a lot of these papers you could probably pull out. If they weren't going to be in a page protector, I would probably glue them down better than I am. But I tried to get at least one little dot of glue on every single blade of grass. And I did flip it over as well and put some glue on the back too, just to make sure that um, they were all kind of secure and held down. And then just to help my little picture stand out a bit more, I decided to go ahead and back them. So the two at the top that I'm going to back here, I'm backing them in the darker green because they're a little bit, no, sorry, in the lighter green. Oh my gosh, now there's... <laughs> It is just pandemonium outside my house right now. I'm so sorry for all of that noise. Um, but yes, I'm backing these in the lighter green because they're a little bit darker. These are sort of the pulled back pictures so you can actually see the lion that, that they're looking at. He's not really doing anything. He's just sleeping in the sun, but the boys thought it was super cool. Uh, and we've been back multiple times. The boys here, this is from 2014, so they're very little. They're two and three, and Kaylin is eight. So, um, yeah, we've been back multiple times and seen him moving around, and he's he's pretty active. But this was their first time seeing him, and they just thought it was so cool that he was there. So um, I've got the two pictures where all three kids are kind of standing there and then I backed the this picture, um, which one is um, Sebastian. They're both boys are clapping, and one Sebastian is looking at Fox, and in the other one, Fox is looking at Sebastian, and you know the opposite is looking in, into the camera. So it was just kind of cute. They were very excited. So those are backed on the darker green, and they're gonna get kind of get popped into the center. And I'm using a little bit of foam to pop them up. Again, it kind of gives a little bit of dimension to the grass too, because it forces the grass to. Um, be pulled out a little bit and and so it just helps to really drive home that the grass is all different layers so I'm, I just tuck them in and there's a few times I had to snip a blade of of the grass to kind of make sure it wasn't covering anybody but uh, I think it worked pretty good it looks kind of cool there we go yeah I knew I had to snip a few blades of grass there and I've done a few different layouts with paper weaving on it. So when it kind of came up and I saw that, I was really excited because I do love doing it. But I was also trying to figure out how I could make it just a little bit different. I've done a full page. I've just done 
elements that have been paper woven, uh, you know, like different shapes, and then you kind of cut, cut the shape. And so I was trying to figure out how I could make it just a little bit different from what I've done before, just a little bit unique. And uh, I think, I think I accomplished it. <laughs> um, it was kind of fun. It's, it's one of those things where again, like I could totally keep adding more little blades of grass and fussing with it and, you know, just tweaking it and, and, you can kind of fuss as much as you want or you can leave it. I didn't want to start adding too much to the point where you lost the point that there's weaving involved. Um, but definitely I could have kind of kept going. So it was fun or added more patterns or any one of those things. Um, so here... I was trying to decide if I wanted to do maybe some clouds up at the top. I remembered that I had clouds, cork clouds from Spiegel Mom Scraps, but I think I actually used them all up. So I don't have any of them left. Uh, and originally when I saw that we needed to use cork, that was kind of where I was going. I was going to maybe do a little bit of ink blending up in the top of the page uh, and do some sort of you know, cloud element. But when I went through all my stuff and I, I, I do vaguely remember that I finished off the package. Um, so I was sort of thinking about something else I could do. And Kaylin has this super bright pink tank top on in the picture. So I thought, why don't I go ahead and bring just a little bit of color. So I was going through my how to kill a kit with style kit and found these papers. This is um, a Dear Lizzie collection. And so it had that rainbow paper, but I feel like the um, pink in this paper just really stands out. I think it's because there's so much green down below that you don't notice the greens and the blues in the paper, but the pinks really stand out. The yellow really stands out. So I went ahead and found the rainbow paper and then I found um, just another paper that has lots of green but also some blues and a little pop of pink in it. I don't know how that just happened to be there and those were kind of the colors I was going for because I thought it does give the impression a little bit of the sky and the pink is birds which kind of you know goes with the whole zoo theme and then that yellow is sort of like the sun so in my head I'm thinking all of the elements that I put up at the top are sky elements but then they also have those little pops of pink and then some yellow that just kind of brightens everything up um, and I think that it helps to draw your eye to the pictures a little bit because um there is that sort of white space right in the middle and that really stands out. And then the yellow is the contrast. So uh, yeah, that's that's where my brain was going with that. But I do like that extra little pop of color too. So it kind of adds just a, a fun element to it, a little bit of whimsy. And because I wasn't quite sure about what my title was going to be or what kind of thickers I might end up using, it was kind of nice to be able to bring in some other colors just in case that was the direction that I wanted to go in. Um, and I, it took me forever to figure out this title, believe it or not. Um, but I decided to pull these thickers, they're chipboard thickers, and they have gold in them, which I needed a gold element. So I've got these chipboard thickers that say Zoo Cuties. And then in my little stash of foam words and foam letters because I needed foam thickers I found the word love and I made the word these so my title is love these zoo cuties and uh, it works I think it works <laughs> so that's what I went with um, and now I'm adding my sequins so just went into my Spiegel Mom scraps uh, stash of sequins, the massive stash that you can see beside me. That's only probably a third of the stash of sequins that I have, but I found these beautiful green ones. They were actually created for Wild Whisper for their Play in the Dirt collection. So there's a whole bunch of different colors of green. And then there are these sort of long, almost like 
grass things. Now they're orange except for one that is a lime green. I must have used all the other lime green ones. Um, but I added those little orange pieces in because again, it just gives that little extra pop of color that kind of breaks up all of the green and all of the white. Um, so I added my sequins and I added my cork, some little um, cork hearts from, again, Spiegel Mom Scraps. And now I'm doing something that I kind of wish I hadn't done. It's done. I started it. I committed to it. I had to do it. But I do sort of wish that I hadn't done this. I really felt like I had to add my sketchy lines. You guys know I do this. I have that kind of weird thing about <laughs> white space and needing a border. I added my sketchy lines and then I did it to the thickers that said love these and I don't love them but they're done so it's there. Other than that though I love this layout. I think it was so much fun to put together. I really love how it turned out and thank you so so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please check out all the links below to see everybody else who's taking the challenge and until next time happy scrapping. Bye.